Hello again. Um, yesterday I was in the park and uh, it was a beautiful day and um, you could hear dogs barking in the background. You could hear children playing and screaming in a nearby park. And at one point this uh, group of geese, Egyptian geese, were flying overhead and the footage was brilliant. But it wasn't until I got home and I looked at the footage that I didn't quite get across the message I wanted to get across. Now the topic of this episode is mapping and why it's important. Okay, So like I said, I took the footage before and um, realised that it wasn't quite the way I wanted it to be. Now this series is not about my experiences of 20 years with cochlear implants. It's also about making this journey easier. Okay, so I'm going to try again. Let's get on with take two. When we talk about cochlear implant mapping, we're not talking about an A to Z or an atlas, although the principle is actually similar. Now what a map is, it is something, it's, a, it's an electronic file that's uploaded to your sound processor, okay? And it will help you get your hearing to where you want it to be. Now, in episode five, I spoke about my activation 20 years ago. And during that first appointment, we created my first map, okay? So that map has been uploaded to my sound processor and is what helps me to hear today. So mapping is therefore a process where every so often you go back to your audiologist and you will work together with them. You will tell them uh, what sounds you can no longer tolerate due to loudness. And you'll also tell them what sounds you can barely perceive any longer, okay? So you don't need to do anything else. The software does the rest. So what then happens is the software will compress all of your input into something called a map. Remember, a map is an electronic file that is uploaded to your sound processor. So you could compare this process to updating your smartphone with an app or a, a favorite music track. Remember when you used to get your hearing tests? Yeah. What happens is you go to visit your audiologist and they will play a number of beeps to you and you need to confirm what you can and can't hear. Now what they do is they take all this information and they put it onto a graph which becomes your audiogram. Now here we can see my audiogram from 2013 just before I got implanted. And you can see that I could barely hear anything. I'm getting used to this now. I often get asked, am I even eligible for a cochlear implant? Now, the lower down the audiogram you are, the more eligible you are for a cochlear implant generally. However, eligibility really depends on where you are. So if you're thinking that now is the time to do something about your hearing, don't delay, go to your healthcare professional and start your cochlear implant journey. It's very exciting and there's lots to look forward to. So after getting your implant then, the focus is really on bringing those scores back up and mapping helps you to get there. In this audiogram, you can see how my hearing was in the profound hearing loss range before implantation. Notice the markings at the bottom of the screen. Now, after many mapping sessions and taking the time to get used to each of the maps, I now have the hearing of a normal person. Everyone will respond differently to a cochlear implant. For example, if you lost your hearing quite recently and you get your cochlear implant quite quickly, you will be able to benefit from something called an audiological memory. If you lost your hearing many years ago, you might 
take a bit longer to relearn all the sounds. Now I say this because I had a very poor hearing for many, many years. So by the time I got my cochlear implant, my brain had to relearn all those sounds. So I remember asking, what's that sound? What's that sound? And I had to relearn sounds such as what the washing machine sounded like, what cutlery sounded like, what um, the salt and pepper shaker sounded like. It's exciting. Sometimes mapping works and sometimes it doesn't. I remember going to my audiologies once per week in the early days of my cochlear implant journey and I would tell her the sounds that I liked, the sounds that I didn't like and together we created a new map each week and I would go away and try the map. Reminder, the map is an electronic file that's been uploaded to the sound processor. Okay. Now one thing that I think is really important to not just understand but also appreciate every time you change your map this is going to stimulate the cochlear nerve differently which means a different set of signals will travel along the audiological nerve and onto the brain okay so mapping is an incredibly powerful process Today's episode might seem a bit technical, but it's really, really important. So I want to leave you with these tips. My first tip is go to your audiologist as often as you can. My second tip is while you're not at the audiologist, take note of all the things that you can and can't hear. This will be really good feedback for your audiologist. It will help them to help you, okay? The third tip is be patient. I know you've probably waited many, many years to get your hearing back, to get on with life, but just be a little bit more patient for a little bit longer. And the fourth tip is enjoy every hearing moment. Mapping is an incredibly straightforward process, but it's an incredibly powerful one. Okay. Now, before I go today, the focus has been on mapping today. Now, mapping is not the only way to improve your hearing with a cochlear implant. So it's given me some more thoughts about another clip that I'm going to create. So um, join us next week when I will be talking to my friend Jessica. Originally from India, Jessica is currently studying in the United States and would like to share some of her story with us. See you then. Bye for now.